Sam Rudd into fourth place now, Neil. So I bet you can't believe it. I mean, he's got such a good race pace. We saw them... Good afternoon from the glorious Angel Nieto Jerez circuit. There may sadly be none of the usual. They go out, MotoGP in Spain is on the way and it's a good start from Frankie Morbidelli and of course the Ducatis as Jack Miller leads. Peko Bagnaia is going to come through. Is he going to stick it into second? No. That was Morbidelli so brave on the outside of his pal, Peko. And here comes Quartararo already trying to attack the Ducatis but it's Miller from Morbidelli with Bagnaia and then in fourth place, Fabio Quartararo, good start from one of the Suzuki's, it's Juan Mir, but Nakagami's going to take him back. Yeah, Alicia Spargaro also great start, Gav up to fifth place, if he can stay in that position, that'll be Aprilia's best ever finish, so um, he has got great pace as Aleix. Everyone's going to be, look, watch this now, Aleix is going to try and get a good run and get past if he can, Fabio Quartararo. First time into Danny Pedrosa corner, hard on the brakes for turn six. All jockeying for position and Fabio Quartararo just holds off. Alicia Spark row behind with Juan Mir there in sixth place, moved up four positions. Nakagami lost a couple of spots there. Mark Marquez already, he's made up three positions from his starters. Dust in the air, I thought someone might have gone down, but it's just they're pushing so hard right on the edge of the track, kicking up some trails of dust as Quartararo thinks about attacking Banyaya. This is actually is where Banyaya is strong on this part running to the line. Yeah, there's a big gap to where Marquez is. I'm assuming that he's pulled quite a big move for that uh, gap to appear. Oh, and there was, there was. Uh, as we saw the dust in the air, I didn't think anyone had gone down, but it's Alex Marquez, his brother, who has crashed out oh, of the race. That's and, good. and he doesn't Colour look good for the shoulder, exactly, already for Alex Marquez. At fast turn eight, actually, it might have been after we did see the shots of them coming through. So, Alex Marquez is down, but his brother Mark has just been passed by Brad Binder for 10th place. Across the line, Jack Miller leads after lap one of the Spanish Grand Prix in Jerez from Frankie Morbidelli, who definitely has a pace to match Quartararo this weekend. Then it's Bagnaia, there is Quartararo, but he's happy enough in fourth place at the moment. Marquez dropping back like a stone, actually. He's been passed by Bradle. I think he's been passed by his teammate as well, Paul Spargaro. And Joan Zarco, too, who's lost positions off the start. As you can see, he's just headed to the front of that group. Maverick Vinales has lost a couple of spots. Oh, Binder. Binder's gone. Binder. Binder. Binder, who's gone down already and a crash. Turn two. He, yeah, at turn five this weekend. And he goes down at turn two. Banyaya defensive ahead of Quartararo, who's going to try and ride around the outside. No chance. No chance. He can't do it. No. He just can't do it there at turn six and gain on the switchback. Even if you try and stay in, you're just not going to get the drive you need to stay in front through turn seven. No, Peko did it, what every rider would do as, as he's been lent up on the outside, he just started to release the brake just to push uh, Fabio out. I think we can see all the uh, debris in the gravel actually from where Alex Marquez went down. We heard from Lucio Cecchinello before, but that would be disastrous. It, it definitely looked like he was, that arm was hanging in the old. Uh, collarbone broken fashion so we've through, seen that so many times over the years through these beautiful right handers in front of a massive grandstand where sadly no fans are in this weekend at this brilliant old venue as Quartararo comes through on the brakes and he gets past Peko Banyaya nothing Banyaya can do the question mark here Neil is if Banyaya can blast past Quartararo on the run up to turn one but then Yamahas we've seen get out of the corner as well so it's not the straights aren't long enough here for the Ducati to really take advantage of all that extra horsepower traction on the Yamaha is the key isn't it yeah. they are getting that power down to the ground better than the, the Ducatis actually yeah yeah we, yeah we've seen that all year we were sort of they're round one especially Cancel, yeah. yeah coming on to that start and finish straight the Yamahas were fantastic pleasing to see Jack Miller at the front of the race his season hasn't panned out as we were expecting and uh, let's not forget he was a pre-season favorite to be the lead rider at the Ducati Pekka Bagnaia has taken the honor so far with two podium finishes He's desperate to change the record there at the Gatti and make it him that everyone is talking about. Well, you heard yesterday, he said he was so relieved to get back on the front row. He spoke about confidence and pressure, but he said it's not coming from the team, it's what he's putting oh, himself under. Oh, and that's oh. Alex Rins, I don't believe it. I he literally sat just up by his teammate. Just looked away for a split second, he got onto the dirty part of the track, trying to keep the thing turning. A little bit of trail braking and down he went. Second race in a row for Alex Rins that he crashes out. This time it wasn't in the podium positions, but his season has started without a podium and now with two crashes in a row. Big, bitter disappointment 
four wins. Good start to the race this for Alicia Spargro, right in the mix. And, and you know what? Start of the weekend, you really fancy these chances. It feels like the Yamahas, particularly Quartararo, made progress that the Aprilia yep. wasn't able to as here he comes on Bagnaia Quartararo has gone through on Morbidelli two riders on the move with Jack Miller still leading so the Spargo picked a fourth place now Neil so I bet you can't believe it I mean he's got such a good race pace we saw them we saw two mistakes yesterday and two little crashes here actually down here at turn two and well, I think we're a little bit concerned that that was going to affect Alicia's confidence ever so slightly, but uh, he looks fantastic, looks comfortable. We know he's done race distance on the, these tyres, so there's no worry that the tyres are going to drop off for him. Three laps down, Neil. We've got what we wanted, haven't we? We've got the, the Catty out front holding up Quattararo for as long as he's going to be able to hope to. What you just need is Frankie to be able to return the favour. And he's only picked up this year so far 14 points. But you can tell there's a right <laughs> smile underneath the mask there for Gigi Dalinia. Yeah, we're going to see some celebrations. I have never wanted to be back in that paddock anymore. <laughs> if anyone knows how to party, it's this man. He will have no voice left, I will guarantee you. Because he will be shouting and screaming once he goes over that line. My liver is glad that we aren't over there in there, <laughs> is all I can say. There will be a few tipples of sherry tonight, I'm sure, at the Catty as we come through into the stadium. No fans to witness this historic moment at this most legendary of venues, but Jack Miller has just got four more corners to go to take his first victory in the dry in MotoGP. The fast Alex Cruvier cor corner, then it's into Ferrari. Jorge Lorenzo corner will be next for Jack Miller as he comes round to turn 13 for the final time. Jack Miller can be comfortable in the knowledge that he has finally, finally won a MotoGP race in dry conditions. Yes. Jack Miller wins on, the man. Spanish Grand Prix. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Good on you, son. Miller wins from Bagnaia in second. Frankie Morbidelli is third. Takanaka Kami is in fourth place. He equals his best ride in MotoGP. Juan Mir is in fifth. Alicia Spargro equals his best on an Aprilia in sixth. And poor old Fabio Quartararo finishes in 13th place. But what happened for the Frenchman? Wow, what a feeling. First and second for the Bologna Bullets. They are so pleased. And now, now the season starts. His championship is back on. We're going to go to tracks where this Ducati works really well on as well. Obviously, a ref's never been a Ducati track. Yeah, oh. What we said, the last Ducati winner here, Loris Caparossi, back in 2006. <laughs> oh, oh, one, two for Ducati, and look what it means to Gigi Dalinia, Dave Tardazzi. You have to feel for Fabio, though, don't you, Neil? Yeah, well, all you can do as a racer is, whatever the issue was, it's weren't clearly not his fault, is it? So he'll, uh, he'll come back, press regroup, it's his home Grand Prix next. And, uh, I mean, he's riding absolutely fantastic, isn't he? So, Quietly going about his business there in fourth in the championship now is Juan Mir. Pretty similar to last year as he picks up a fifth place here. That's all he managed last year, if you remember, from the two visits. There is uh, Pekka Banyaya. Is he signalling Here we go. To Jack. I want to see Jack. Jack will be so emotional. He, he will be, as you say, he will have lost his voice. Yeah. Without a doubt. Oh, we're going to, of course. You can't go on board with Jack Miller without a full stand-up wheelie down the back straight. All we need now is a little bit of goon riding and we've got the, uh, the full He set. promised us, he promised us we'd get some goon riding. Yeah. He's going to try to stop it, isn't he too? He will love this one. Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, you won't meet a more normal MotoGP winner. He's just the lad from next door, isn't he? Oh, he's a Townsville boy up in Queensland. They're a rare breed up there to live through those top tropical conditions. But he is a great, great lad, isn't he? He's a great that's the... ambassador for this sport. That's yeah, what he is. He's just a different kind of character that this sport needs. Mark Marquez. Ninth place finish, I only think... 10 seconds off the win. I tell you what, after what he's been through yeah. this weekend, it's a, it's a step in the right direction, but I tell you what they need to, they need to work on that Honda. They need to get the front end of it somehow. Look, I think I think Nakagami finishing in fourth shows us the direction they can go in 
here. They've got a test here at the track tomorrow. And you have to feel, don't you, that they're going to... Uh, they've got a lot to work through by all accounts, lots of different things to try, but Nakagami is giving them a bit of a direction. Yeah. I'm pleased for him, I'm pleased for 